Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gen Sense. Hope that you've been doing well. I've been doing a few niche fragrances, indie fragrances lately, and I decided today I was gonna go ahead and tackle another designer fragrance. This is one I did a first impression of when it first came out, but I never got around to doing the full review. It's Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb Infrared. So with this one, when I did the first impression, you know, I liked it, uh, maybe wasn't immediately in love with it. And I have changed my opinion a bit since I have been able to wear it more. Since we're heading into fall and winter, I figured it'd be a good time to tackle it. So in today's video, like always, I will show you the presentation, break the fragrance down a little bit for you, let you know what I like, what I dislike, all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. Let's check out Spice Bomb Infrared. Before we jump into the presentation, let me sneak a couple codes over to you. Well, actually one code for two sites. The code is GENTS10, which will save you 10% off either twistedlily.com, struggled to get that out, twistedlily.com, or maxaroma.com. Either of those websites, you can use GENTS10, it'll save you 10%. All right, presentation time. So here we got the box. You have the name of the fragrance, the name of the house, the size and concentration on the front there. It's an eau de toilette concentration. On top of the box, you have the VNR for Victor and Rolf. On the back, you have your ingredient information and your barcode. And on the bottom, you have your badge code. So the badge code here is 22U10D4. And here we have the bottle. So it's in that typical Spice Bomb style, has a really nice gradient. So it's red at the bottom, goes to black up at the top, has the name of the fragrance and house right there on the front. You have the little VNR Victor and Rolf grenade pin that you can pull so that you can spray the fragrance. And then on the bottom, you have a sticker which has your batch code on it. So this being a Victor and Rolf, it is at discounters, but it's still not not really cheap. These fragrances, Spice Bomb fragrances, they never get discounted all that much. So like right now, as of this video, if you watch this in the future, maybe it's different, but a 50 mil size bottle of this stuff, it's gonna run you close to $70. So on the cheaper end, that's about what you can expect to pick this one up if you're interested. Like I said, uh, they don't get discounted heavily. It just doesn't really happen. There are a number of houses like that, and uh, this is one of them. Ah, 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 I almost forgot. Sorry about that. Let me spray a couple sprays for you guys. Tester strip. Atomizer on these is actually really good. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, when I first got this in, sprayed it on, tested it out, thought it was okay, but it maybe didn't immediately make me fall in love with it, or not as much as I hoped that it would. Uh, that being said, I was coming off Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Toilette, Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum, which to be fair is better than the Eau de Toilette, but the Night Vision fragrances are not all that Spice Bomb-y. And that was one of the main things I did like about Spice Bomb Infrared when I first tried this out, is that at least it was more spicy. So that's something. Uh, it's uh, the whole thing I've harped on a number of times, but if, if you name your fragrance Spice Bomb, you probably should make sure that there's a good amount of spice in there. If there's not, then the name is just stupid. I don't care if it's a flanker or whatever. Come on. You can't make a flower bomb fragrance, which is in case you're unaware for some reason, the women's kind of take on this line and then have no florals in it at all. It's just kind of, it's goofy. That doesn't matter ultimately, Spice Bomb Infrared. How does it smell? Well, it is very red, so Obviously the packaging got red on the box. You have red on the bottle, both of those in a gradient. Infrared is the name and they really leaned into that with the notes. So I like that. You know, they kept it all cohesive. So you have pepper in there, you have red fruits, you've got saffron, you've got cinnamon, all these notes, of course, bring the color red to mind. So when you spray it on, it's sweet. I would say actually sweeter than the original Spice Bomb, sweeter than Spice Bomb Extreme, because it does have more of an emphasis on these red fruits in the opening. And those mix together with a big blast of spice, specifically the cinnamon and also pepper. And the cinnamon is gonna kind of lean into that sweetness as well. So the fruit and the cinnamon together, I should say. So that's really gonna give you that amplified sweetness here as compared to 
the original Spice Bomb or Spice Bomb Extreme. It's very warm and spicy, has a little bit of a, a bite to it, like a little bit of an aggressiveness, but it's also playful at the same time, so it doesn't come across potentially off-putting. It's actually really, really appealing. There's not too much here that you could consider divisive at all. It's very easy to pull off. I would actually say compared to the original Spice Bomb or Spice Bomb Extreme, that Spice Bomb Infrared is the easiest to wear of that trio. I will get into that more here in a second, but for now, let's talk more about how this smells. So as this dries, that fruity scent profile from the opening, it starts to dissipate, kind of steps to the side. So it no longer smells like uh, red berries or red fruits, but the sweetness from that still stays. So it's no longer discernible as red fruits once you head into the, the mid and the dry down, but the sweetness lingers, it sticks around for a while. By a while, I mean pretty much like the whole time it's on your skin. But those spices, they linger, they become the focal point of the fragrance through the mid. You've got saffron, you've got cinnamon, you have pepper, you got a number of different spices kind of mingling with that sweetness that the scent has. And as you enter the dry down, you actually get a little bit of tobacco as well, which is gonna help tie this in a little bit with the original Spice Bomb. Now to me, there's a pretty clear difference between the original Spice Bomb and Spice Bomb Infrared as far as how they smell. Spice Bomb Infrared definitely smells more modern, smells more youthful, smells sweeter. The spice is less aggressive in this one than in the original Spice Bomb. So I wouldn't really say that this is like an amped up version of the original or anything like that. It's absolutely one of those flankers that is taking the original's DNA, but then putting a pretty healthy twist on it and doing its own thing. I would say though, if you're gonna compare it to one of the Spice Bomb fragrances, like which one is it the closest to? The original, I'd say. Spice Bomb Extreme is a little bit deeper, a little more mature than this one, not quite as sweet. It does have sweetness from black vanilla, but it's not as front loaded the sweetness on Spice Bomb Extreme. This one, you know, it's all fruits and sweet spices and warm spices. And then as it dries down, you slowly get that tobacco that kind of comes in and shores everything up. Whereas the original Spice Bomb Extreme is more spices that are a little bit smoother than the original. And then as it dries down, more of that sweetness kind of slowly comes out. So they approach the sweetness different, I guess you could say. Infrared is more right there in the opening and then lingers as it dries. Spice Bomb Extreme is more spicy and then the sweetness comes out as it dries, at least to me. And in the far dry down, kind of coming in underneath the tobacco, it's just a bit of a masculine amber woodiness coming out of infrared. You could almost think of this kind of if you, you stretch your imagination a little bit, like Burberry London, if it were made today, and was marketed more toward people middle-aged and younger. Because I think Burberry London is more for guys middle-aged and older, at least that's who seems to appreciate it the most. It's gonna give you those fall and winter holiday season vibes when you spray this on because of all those, those spices that come through. And those red fruits in the opening, again, giving me kind of like a red berry vibe mixed with apple almost, maybe a tinge of like citrus on the sides, but all that mixed together with the spices, the tobacco, and then ultimately the amber woody base makes a fragrance that, that really does shine in fall and winter time and especially around the holiday season. For me personally, it's just as good during the day as the evening. I don't really think of it as like an evening only fragrance. I think it's got pretty good versatility as long as it's cold outside or at least cool. And the performance here, Really nice, what you would expect. Above average longevity, above average projection. Spice Bomb Extreme is a bit better for me as far as how long it lasts off my skin, but this is a very, very solid fragrance as far as performance goes. I don't think anybody's gonna complain about it. So yeah, uh, daytime, nighttime, fall, winter time, that's when I'd wear it. Uh, not really to me an office fragrance, casual fragrance, date night fragrance, night out, uh, stuff like that. In terms of compliments, Big time, big time compliment puller, mainly because this is sweetened up and current taste for fragrances does seem to be fragrances that lean into the sweet side. You see that with a lot of fragrances coming out from in nowadays. Uh, most of them are pretty sweet one way or the other. They may use a different uh, note breakdown, a different style to get there, uh, but they're 
mostly trying to be sweet right now. And this one certainly is. So overall, Spice Palm Infrared grew on me a lot. I really like what it does. I like that it gets positive attention. It has great performance. I would personally just like, as far as my own taste, put it below Spice Bomb Extreme. I think that one is still my favorite. I would put it above the original Spice Bomb at this point. I I would put it above uh, Night Vision Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum for myself. And then Eau Fraiche is, uh, yeah, it's uh, not really with us anymore. So overall, that would put Spice Bomb Infrared as my second favorite from the line. It's really solid stuff. And just being honest here, I think if I were younger, like, you know, you go back to when I was 18, 19, 20, something like that, I would much rather have this than Spice Bomb Extreme at that point. I think it, the pendulum starts to shift the other way as like you cross into your 30s, maybe then Spice Bomb Extreme is maybe a little better match, but uh, infrared is still solid, really good stuff. So there we go, Spice Bomb Infrared. If you have smelled that one or if you own it, let me know how it, it kind of fares against the other ones in the Spice Bomb lineup. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you in another day with another video. See you later.